um, yeah, it's it's a pleasure to to be able to make this presentation. At this time, I want to greet everyone, and particularly those who were here last week. And we apologize once more for the hitches. I'm going to speak to you about the progress of the Sikho Pan African Research Consortium uh, SPACO project in Nigeria, as well as the feasibility of newborn screening for sickle cell disease with point of care tests. Um, prior to 2010, uh, research on sickle cell disease in Nigeria was largely based on single institutions with small sample sizes. And then in 2017, the Sickle Pan African Research Consortium grant was awarded by the NIH to build the infrastructure for future research in sickle cell disease in Africa with the following specific aims. Uh, establishing a single patient consented registry of 13,000 patients to facilitate epidemiologic, translational, and clinical research studies to develop multi-level standard of care guidelines for the management of sickle cell disease, to strengthen skills in healthcare, data management and research, plan for cohort and implementation studies on newborn screening, infection prophylaxis and hydroxyurea use, as well as establish the ethical, legal and social framework for conducting research within the continent and engaging patients. Um, the SPACO consists of a hub in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, and collaborating sites in Ghana and Nigeria. The SPACO site in Nigeria is at the Center of Excellence for Sickle Cell Disease Research and Training at the University of Abuja, which I direct. And it's good for us to know that we adopted um, a multi-pronged approach to this by collaborating with the Sickle Cell Support Society of Nigeria and its network of clinical centers in the six geopolitical zones of the country. And you can see on my left, uh, the, the centers that are involved in this project. And on my right, courtesy of uh, a collaborator, we have a map, it's the back, backdrop of a prevalence map of uh, sickle cell disease in the country. Um, so in um, with regard to meeting our targets, you can see uh, the, the, the histogram shows the SPACO enrollment, cumulative enrollment per month from onset, and how month by month we, we, we were over the target of enrollment each month, such that by the end of the third year, of, of the project, we have achieved 78% of our target. Then with regard to the other specific aims, um, at consortium level, we have developed a multi-level standard of care guideline uh, for uh, sickle cell disease. Uh, for the management of sickle cell disease, we have strengthened skills in healthcare, in data management, and in research. And we, we, had, uh, we, we undertook a needs assessment. And based on that, we developed a master's in uh, clinical research uh, program, as well as uh, a postgraduate diploma in uh, bioinformatics. Because when you start accumulate enrolling patients in a large uh, uh, database, uh, you have uh, so many parameters to evaluate. And you need to train people to be able to give that level of analysis. And the pictures show the various workshops that we have had with site leads from different uh, parts of the country that are facilitated by the Data Coordinating Center in South Africa. And one of the things that we have done um, with the Sickle Cell Support Society of Nigeria is to target education on sickle cell disease uh, to uh, community health extension workers because we feel that these are the people who are close to the community where the sickle cell patients are and we wanted to be able to equip them on an ongoing basis with information to help them to look after patients 
in the communities. And another aspect of the skills development program is the multidisciplinary management of uh, sickle cell disease in our centers. And um, going into the fourth year, we want to expand this training to all the sites. Um, also, uh, we have uh, carried out skills development uh, training in laboratory uh, diagnosis of sickle cell disease using uh, platforms that are not commonly found in Nigeria, although simple, uh, such as the isoelectric focusing platform by Pekinelma. And this we have done in collaboration with the ASH, uh, uh, American Society of Hematology, Newborn Screening Consortium for Sickle Cell Disease in Africa. And um, we also have uh, hosted the students from University of Chicago, uh, the Global Health Fellows in the, in the summers, who are immersed in a, in a sickle cell disease program for research, mentoring, and training. One objective that we have had from the SCSSN has been to describe how sickle cell disease varies across Nigeria. And therefore, we were quite uh, eager to analyze the data from the uh, sickle cell disease registry to, to describe the clinical phenotypes of sickle cell disease in Nigeria. And that word just means to describe how sickle cell disease varies from person to person. Um, when we looked at the database, we found out that only 9.4% of the over 3,000 patients we had at that time of analysis were on hydroxyurea, a disease-modifying drug. Uh, uh, and we also found that uh, only 15.2% of patients in the database were on penicillin prophylaxis. So it's not surprising that we had 67.5% of patients in the, in the database uh, having a history of blood transfusion within the past one year. We also uh, analyzed and documented the frequency of acute and chronic complications uh, of sickle cell disease among the patients enrolled in the database. And we summarized uh, our findings in a recent publication uh, in Blood Cells, Molecules, and Diseases. And that paper, I think you have to pay for that one. Um, the implications of uh, knowing about the prevalence of these complications is important for training of healthcare workers uh, on how to manage the complications. And it's also important to plan appropriate interventions for the patients who are accessing care at these uh, clinical centers. And so as we plan to go into year four, we're already in year four and beyond. We need to raise the awareness of the existence of the standard of care. And I expect that people will ask and we will send it to them, these standard of care guidelines that will help us to manage patients in a uniform manner. Um, and also help us to make sure that people are trained to use hydroxyurea. We want to maintain and ex expand the uh, Sparkle Nigeria cohort. We also need to strategize on how to mobilize and, and, uh, and identify the over 4 million Nigerians that have sickle cell disease. It's good to know that we now have the tools at our hands to do mass screening as well as newborn uh, screening. But it's not just important to identify patients. We also need to mobilize resources for uh, to apply evidence-based interventions for sickle cell disease where I wrote in the registry. And then more importantly also, we need to uh, further describe uh, a detailed uh, uh, phenotyping of our patient cohort as a basis for genomic studies in sickle cell disease. And judging from the work that we have done so far and the fact that we have all of these patients in, enrolled in this registry, we, we are now poised for large-scale clinical trials on sickle cell disease in Nigeria. Uh, so very quickly, as you can see from uh, what the desk officer said, that the country had indeed made some plans uh, and established centers for newborn screening and for comprehensive care. The country had put some investment in uh, 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 infrastructure to to screen newborns in the, in the a conventional way. The country had developed protocols and in, the map shows us where these uh, MDG sickle cell centers are. But from 2012, when the centers were set up, there was very little coming out of these centers by way of actual screening. 
uh, of the newborns. And this is because of the high expense of uh, the machines, equipment and reagents for newborn screening. And therefore, at the Center for Sickle Cell Disease Research and Training, we propose a primary healthcare model to deliver services for patients with sickle cell disease that is based on basic health maintenance, uh, which will be provided to people where, close to where they live, um, uh, at primary healthcare centers and strengthen the referral pathways to the clinical centers. We felt that this should be integrated into existing public health programs, such as immunization program. And um, we felt that if we were able to demonstrate uh, that this is possible in one local uh, government area, that if uh, it is successful, it can be upscaled to other areas both within Nigeria and, and other uh, SCD budding high budget countries. And uh, we, were, we also just wanted to, to see why the centers were not enrolling newborns, um, screening newborns. So we carried out a multi-center survey of acceptability of newborn screening uh, for, uh, you know, across the country. And, and we found out that over 80% of Nigerians would accept this. Um, so therefore, we set out to address the barriers of the high cost of uh, uh, the conventional standard newborn screening programs by when we identified and evaluated the diagnostic accuracy of two point of care tests compared to the gold standard. Um, and, and these, these uh, studies, all of these uh, studies were actually um, uh, uh, published in international peer-reviewed uh, journals. So when we identified the point of care test and we established that they were reliable as a screening tests compared to the gold standard, we, uh, one of the questions that people were asking were, which one is better? And so we carried out a head-to-head -head comparison of sickle cell, sickle scan and hemotype SC and uh, we found out that they were comparable in diagnostic accuracy compared to HPLC. And so we assessed the feasibility of integrating a screening with point of care tests into the, into the primary health care center, specifically into the immunization uh, uh, services. And we had uh, documented the fact that this is accept, acceptable not only to parents, but to the healthcare workers in the, in the PHCs. And we went on to screen 3,603 babies with a hemotype SC in five uh, primary healthcare centers in the uh, Gogolada Area Council. At the bottom here is what the two point of care tests are. And you can see the kind of rowdy environment in which uh, a newborn screening um, um, immunization program and the work has been, has been um, published uh, just yesterday in Lancet Hematology, a high impact factor journal. And so what did we find out? We were able to uh, screen the babies and establish the prevalent rate for sickle cell disease and sickle cell trait for the community, which showed consistency with the 2018 National Demographic Health Survey. You can see the tables at a comparison, and it's also in the journal, which is uh, um, it's free, it's uh, open access, so you can uh, download the journal and read more about this work. But one of the things that we found out was when you identify day or week old babies with sickle cell disease, and the parents will tell you, oh no, my child does not have sickle cell disease. So we felt that a parental education and counseling on the meaning of a positive result is important, as is diligence to minimize loss to follow up. And uh, one of the things that we started thinking about is also that we should piggyback um, on the HIV AIDS program so that the Jews who are familiar with following up in that program can also help to follow up babies in the community. We still have some unresolved uh, uh, questions as to what would be the most effective uh, mechanism uh, for follow up because we found out that when we sent the babies to the pharmacy to collect the drugs, more babies ended up with nine months of uh, follow up there than the babies who would go to uh, the pediatric uh, sickle cell center. And so in summary, 
I just it's not enough to know that we have the highest population of sickle cell disease in the world. We are beginning to do some things to to uh, we want to do some things about that. We have established the infrastructure for cohort and implementation studies uh, through SPACO. We want to expand that to enroll more patients, and this will be the highest in any single country. We have demonstrated the feasibility of uh, use of points of care tests in newborn screening using existing immunization program. We know extra expenditure in a, in a, in capital or resources. Uh, we we have we. Uh, uh, however, we feel that uh, there still needs to be uh, a way of determining the optimal mechanism for follow-up of screen-detected babies, and uh, we also have to mobilize the resources to uh, uh, offer interventions like folic acid and hydroxyurea uh, with uh, sufficient laboratory and uh, diagnostic support. Uh, so that uh, the babies that are identified via newborn screening uh, can actually be helped uh, uh, post uh, uh, screening. Uh, what we have done is to demonstrate in one local government um, uh, that uh, this is feasible and this has uh, removed the barriers that have prevented the the six uh, centers in the in the geopolitical zones from from working and we feel that this can be applied this model can be applied to many local governments in nigeria and other high disease uh, high burden countries and so these are uh, in the various pictures are the site pis from the different clinical centers in nigeria from time to time we come to abuja or we go elsewhere and we have uh, workshops that help us to do a, a more efficient work and so these are my acknowledgements i want to thank all of you for listening and i'll be glad to have your questions at the end thank you <laughs>